Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be discussing about the spinal fusion surgery that Jonathan had. So I would like to know obviously a little bit more and I'm sure your viewers do too. Can you kind of tell us what to expect kind of before you've even got to the hospital? Yeah, so I'm going to do a rundown of everything that happened from the week prior to the surgery and perhaps up to a week after. Um, there aren't any videos online which currently talk about this, at least in, not in the explicit detail that I'm intending to. So stick around, watch the whole video in full. Um, hopefully this will reach a wider audience then. You know, chance that we know someone out there with a bad back that will need the surgery. So this might help them. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so essentially, so five days prior to the surgery, I was asked to wash daily with some sort of antimicrobial antibacterial wash gel thing um essentially that involved washing my hair and body on alternate days so my hair and body on day one day two would just be my body day three hair and body again so, so on and so forth so that would last five days on each of those days morning and night i'd have to apply a cream up my nostrils um, that was essentially the same sort of principle you're trying to reduce the bacterial load that you have um, as for anyone that doesn't know, after surgery, when you have a spinal decompression, discectomy, fusion, the lot, surgery, um, you're at high risk of infection. Um, not just because of the fact that you have a giant gaping wound, or in my case, two wounds in my back, but because you're not washing as much. Mm -hmm. um, so it's essential that you do these things. Um, during that time also, for five days, you'll be asked to wash, change your bed sheets daily. That means your, your pillowcases, bed covers, sheets, duvet, everything. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a lot of faff. And I imagine you spent quite a bit of money on yes. um, cleaning during that period. Washing, but it is very important. Like it is vital. Like I know it sounds ridiculous that you have to put clean clothes on every day and a clean towel and clean bed sheets, but it's all to reduce infection rates and bacteria and any dirt on you. Because obviously when you go in for a surgery, you are at higher risk because you're going, you're going to surgery. It's not an average run of the day let's just pop to town so it is important and like Jonathan said after your surgery you can't wash as much because you can't get your dressings wet which means doing like a flannel wash isn't going to clean you as much as an actual shower um, which is why the pre-hospital wash is very important to get your body as clean as it possibly can be so that when you can't clean it as much or as well it's not it's not too bad yeah during this time, I did also have some quite severe rashes, mm -hmm. hive skin issues, dry skin. Um, it seems to me that I am highly intolerant to just about everything to some degree. Um, even washing even with the hot high water, sensitive stuff. high ultra sensitive, yeah. special, natural, hundred percent organic, organic, everything. whatever. That does leave me with rashes. So even hot water does, doesn't it? Hot it left water you, will give like, me rashes. Bl blotchy yeah. and. So it's mm, quite um quite sensitive skin. So it's quite yeah. painful then, isn't it? So if you've got eczema, any kind of contact dermatitis, mm -hmm. dermopathy, anything like that, you'll find that your skin may get worse during the period of time. But just speak, grin and bear it. Grin and bear it, mm. but do speak to someone if you're concerned about that or you're worried about, you know, having giant cuts for your body because mm -hmm. it's causing lacerations because of how abrasive it is. Um, they did say though to keep because your wrist on your pre-op appointment a couple of weeks before your wrists were really bad and they did say to continue to moisturize mm. um to kind of get rid of that because what you don't want is open sores on your wrist which could then lead to infection mm. um so you want it obviously as healed up as possible because they said what are you using and we was actually using nappy cream mm. and we have you've used quite a few creams now haven't you yeah. even like the top notch eczema stuff which is ridiculously expensive all the way to just like Nivea moisturizer, we use Sudocrem nappy cream or just like the Sainsbury's basic version. And it's actually the best one for you, isn't it? It's really yeah. helped. Yeah, I've noticed improvement. If I stop using it, I you can tell. You can tell. Yeah. Um, so on that note, number no rambling at the point, just keep clean. You'll <laughs> yeah. give these different things five days before. Afterwards, you probably won't be able to wash. Try and body wash as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Um, bed sheets changed. Yeah. Clean clothes as well, not to be forgotten about. I mean, socks, pants, boxes, uh, yeah. sneakers, whatever you wear. It lot. sounds silly, doesn't it? It really does sound mm. silly. And it sounds like, oh, is that really necessary? But it is. Like you say, it's vital. Yeah. Mm. So essentially, so I've done the five days prior cleaning. 
the next point was going to surgery, mm -hmm. um, going to hospital. So I was I had my mum with me at the time because she dropped me off at the hospital with my stepdad. And it's very much a you wait there for a bit. Someone will then come over and say, oh, honey, you know, you know we're from the catering department. What would you like for lunch and dinner? You know, after surgery, I said, mm -hmm. well, there's not many foods on the list that I'll eat, but I'll eat eggs if there's any. Yeah. Um, on that on that note, I suggest people to come prepared with food. Sophie kindly made me some snacks some and brought me some snacks when she came to visit me. So that was very much appreciated. You may not be very hungry afterwards, mm. but I like to plan on the side of caution that if you are for some reason ridiculously hungry when you come out, which is okay because you've not eaten for however long you're in surgery for mm. and you can't eat for a certain amount of time before the surgery. I think it's six hours, isn't it? Yeah. So you will be hungry, but you may not feel like eating. So I packed snacks just in case probably too much but he's a big muscly lad he needs a bit more so i'd rather pack too much than not enough yeah um, um, i mean it turns out you didn't really have an appetite afterwards no, did you but it no. was there if you wanted it do you know what i mean yeah we'll probably touch on food a bit more in the later, later part of this yeah. But, um yeah come prepared um i'll go on a few useful things that people might find useful mm -hmm. once they're in hospital once they leave as well mm -hmm. later on in this little segment um so you've got into the hospital yeah. you kind of checked in and they've asked your dietary what's kind of next yes yeah, so the next part is i will then be taken by the nurse whether um someone that you know takes you from a to b they say you know this is where you're going to be for a moment um you then are given a gown in my mm -hmm. case the extra large gown that they only had one of um <laughs> they gave me one gown it didn't fit so they had to come along again and get me another van a gown keep your diggity keep, keep it all diggity. closed um then i think I slipped into my own boxers. They asked me to change into a different pair of boxers, which was like um, some sort of tenor briefs pack. Um, I imagine it was women's ones because they didn't fit very well. <laughs> um, they're very, very snug, I'll tell you that much. Mm. Um, but then they came along and gave me a different pair. Um, they also give you some compression socks. So they're like, in my case, they're green, large. They're like tights, like the tights. material of tights, but they they get really tight on you. They are tight. And the bottom bit, the toe where the toes go, um, there's like a little flap and you can take your toes out. Yeah, much to my frustration because my big toe kept poking out because it really wants to. But they are key, like they are uncomfortable because I had to when I was in hospital having the kids. But they are key to stop um, deep vein, deep vein thrombosis mm. and any kind of swelling and clots and stuff like that. So, cross is a big word. I know, right? What I've been practicing. Um, they are uncomfortable. They don't look appealing. Um, but. Again, vital, absolutely I thought, necessary. I thought it looked quite snazzy and everyone else was well impressed with my Fantastic. Tights. Especially I'm if you slipped your tights, sliders yeah. on with them, even better. Yeah. Real, the fashion icon. So the next, the next part after they gown you up and whatnot, um, mm -hmm. you'll be given a cannula. So in my case, it was um just here through the wrist. It would be hard to see in the lighting. It was across the forearm, kind of here in the lower part. Mm -hmm. um, that was quite comfortable. It wasn't as bad as having it in the... The elbow, elbow area, crease, yeah. or the, the hand, it was actually better on that bit. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any issues with that until one point later on, but I'll discuss that. <clears throat> um, so then you'll have different people come along, they ask you questions, what are your allergies, what's your name, date of birth, do you have any what pets, you what you haven't done. You know, they, they do they, ask they that. Try quite to keep a lot, asking, okay. you know, to make sure that you're you with know it. what's happening. You know what's happening, happening, you're the right person, you're not okay. just having someone pop up in, in your place, sort of thing. Yeah. Um it is annoying, but they did pre warn us at your pre op that they will keep asking you. And it's just for them to make sure that they've got the correct person mm -hmm. and that you know exactly what is happening. And yeah. you've not like forgotten what you're in for. Not that you would, but so I then, guess some people do, don't they? Yeah. The next point is that your consultants, your surgeons mm -hmm. will come along. In my case, I had two surgeons. Mm -hmm. um, Fantastic. Because, aren't they? because of the complications of my surgery, meaning that they could not access my spine from the central column which is what most people have mm -hmm. they had to cut through my muscles on each side of my lower back so the lumbar spine muscles um mm -hmm. so they got right in there you know cut it apart um i think that's called the wilts approach isn't it the wilts approach yeah so that was a it's quite a new sort of approach in terms of um pars defect spondylolisthesis kind of surgeries but it is very efficacious mm -hmm. uh, in my case it was better mm -hmm. it just means in many cases you'll have two surgeons operating rather than one mm -hmm. not a problem um it just means it's a different approach and in some cases it's actually safer the rate of infection was actually lower in my mm. sort of reading so i was quite comfortable with that mm. um it didn't affect you in any way like the the surgeon did say because of your muscles and because of you know 
the body and everything that's just how they have to do it but it will not affect your recovery it will not affect how the surgery can go it's just a different approach mm. but then like we say there's more than one way to skin a cat so if it gets the job done it gets the job done yeah um the next thing is your speech your anesthetist anesthetist anesthetic anesthetic guy <laughs> i can't say that word but um the guy that drugs him up to sleep yeah not um, he says all right we're going to be doing this this is what's going to happen um I'm, in my case, Dr. Cush, mm-hmm. someone else, a, a lady, a, a theatre nurse, some sort of, you know, they so said, okay, come into this room. Um, it's quite a big white room, very, quite spacious. And I sort of said, is this where all the fun happens then? Where are all your, <laughs> your weaponry and swords and things and things to cut me open? Um, turns out that wasn't the operating room. Um, gutting. gutting. <laughs> all I saw was like boxes of syringes all over the shop and um, had a nice comfy. It's the med shop. The med shop. So I was lying down there. Um, they said, all right, we'll put this thing up your nose just to give you some oxygen. I'm like, I had like a thing up my nose. Um, and then I had my my uh, cannula was attached to something. Mm-hmm. Um, then said, all right, you know, um, nice to meet you, Jonathan. You know, we haven't really spoken before, but we're going to be safely putting you to sleep, this sort of thing and the other. Um, I sort of said, okay, so what's going to happen next? And he said, okay, in about 30 seconds, you'll, you'll be completely knocked out and unaware. I was like, all right, that sounds right. We get a good night's sleep, I guess. Um, Anything to get a little bit of sleep. And what happened then is I had like a numbing sensation across my whole body. It's almost like cold, but you felt like your whole body go heavier and heavier and heavier. Mm. And you got really relaxed, like mm. like bliss feeling. Um, it's actually quite a nice feeling. So you do feel very calm before you go in there. And they're very assuring. Yeah, they're fantastic people. with that. Yeah. So <clears throat> even prior to that, I was mildly sedated anyway. So, you know, I was quite unaware. And mm-hmm. I remember the lady to throw me saying, all right, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Yeah, and I, was, I said to her, oh, I imagine when you sort of put people under, um, people ramble and say a lot of mumbles <laughs> and nonsense. Um, by that point, it's about 24 seconds in, <laughs> and I passed out. I was, like, out. I was gone. Uh, Mid-sentence. Just a typical day, really, isn't it? A typical day. <laughs> yeah, then we ha- had surgery, so I had... Um, I actually saw the surgeons as I walked into the theatre. There was about four people there then obviously two so I had about six seven people working on me mm-hmm. at one time um and they were all drinking black coffees and things trying to because my surgery was early in the mornings so yeah like seven eight nine o'clock or something um so they're trying to rev themselves up which I'm quite glad about rather you the first and the last oh yeah so there's that get it and, done um, yeah get it done um yeah. yeah then my surgery commenced at around about nine nine a.m mm-hmm. um that's when I was under them they're starting starting whatever they're doing yeah um then Around about 12.15, I woke up. I know because I saw the clock directly in front of me, about 15 feet away. Um, as I woke up, I was a bit disorientated. It felt quite calm, which was, mm-hmm. I, I was that's the biggest thing I was worried about, yeah. wake, waking up and being panicky. Coming around um, from a uh, general anaesthetic can be nerve-wracking because you don't know what to expect. You don't know if you're going to remember, which is all normal if you don't. It's It's not a problem if you don't remember, but obviously that can then panic you. Um, especially if you wake up with things attached to you that you mm. forgot were there before you went under. Yeah. So, so. F- fortunately, they listened to my qu- request prior to the mm. surgery and they didn't, I didn't wake up with a mask in my face and all this stuff. You know, I had this very open space. Yeah. I just had a lady to my right. Um, she sat down in the chair just, just to watch me as I woke up, mm-hmm. sort of thing, and make sure everything was fine. Writing a note. Writing notes on an iPad, laptop thing. Um, I was like, you all right? She's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you're okay. You're doing fine. You know, all sorts, you know, reassuring sort yeah. of things. Um, I was like, oh, that sounds right, I guess. Then I just passed out again for about two hours. <laughs> then um, the clock, I looked at it again because I could see it directly ahead of me. It was 2.15 by that point. Um, then I could tell I was being wheeled away somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, at that point, I wasn't physically aware of what was going on. You know, they could have poked me and I wouldn't have cared or done anything about it. Um, yeah, around 2.15, I was sort of kind of with it. They wheeled me off into a lift. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just seeing stuff above me, like all these lights and things. I was pretty unaware. Then I kind of fell asleep again. Then I woke up somewhere around 2.40, 2.30, 2.45. Mm. Um, then I was in the ward there, wasn't you? Yeah, I was, I was in the room. So I was in a private hospital and I had <clears throat> a private room right at the end of the hospital where it's a bit quieter. Keep the um, wafing strays to the end. And strays, yeah. Keep the, the, the <laughs> crazies at the end. Yeah. Riff raff. Um, then, yeah, then I woke up and I was like, oh weird and then I, I looked down I was more with it more physically aware I didn't feel as numb um I had a numb left arm so for the first day and a half of post-surgery I mm-hmm. couldn't move my left arm I could just about go 
that I mm. had no sensation you could stab me cut well I wouldn't have felt it yeah um that's because the way I was laying when I had the surgery you have you in your front I was like that and because of my musculature the nerves were pinched so I mean my left arm just by chance was mm. the circulation cut off it is normal it does happen to yeah. some people um don't often be alarmed not, but it does happen to some people yeah um don't be alarmed don't think you've you know they've messed they've, your nerves messed up it. no no that'd be nerves higher up anyway and you'll get your spine but um just think noticed. when you lie in the same position, like if you were to sleep like that, you get a dead arm then. It's no different of he was lying in the same position for three solid hours with obviously medications in his system. So it it will happen. And it some people mm. takes it takes a bit longer to come out. Mm. Um, it's all just each person, isn't it, and how their body deals with it. But yeah, don't yeah. I know it's freaky and it is a bit alarming, but don't be don't be scared about it. It's completely normal. Yeah. Um, any experiences you do have in the hospital do that you're not sure about, mm -hmm. do you make people aware of that in this yeah. instance? Um, you'll usually have like a button to your side, which will say, you know, call for assistance, yeah. turn the light behind you on. Um, they then get like a notification of old room 18 is yeah. lit up. They obviously want assistance. They came very quickly every mm. time. I'm, I'm someone that was very independent, so I didn't ring it. I rang it probably three to four times in total yeah. in uh, two nights that I stayed there. Uh, they're very attentive. I was very fortunate. Um, so what happened next? So I was looking down and I had these compression armband looking things in my, mm -hmm. my ankles. Um, they were frustrating to sleep with that night. Very frustrating because yeah. all nights again. You hear it, you see it. Just all night. All you night. can't move your legs. If you lie on your side, so I could only run my, lie on my right side because mm -hmm. my left arm was dead so I couldn't yeah um i could i could not and cannot still lie my back quite right because my i've got i've got train tracks from my spine it hurts to lie my yeah. back it's like i'm lying on big, big like, pins and metal yeah. bars um it, i do feel that um so yes yeah, so i let on my side then what happened next so i had i had uh i think two meals that day one was maybe one or two boiled eggs that was it nothing else um then the next thing was I'm trying to think now. I had a cheese sandwich. Um, honestly, I suggest people just get any mm. nutritive energy that you can in your body, yeah. even if it's not your normal diet. Even if it's not your normal diet. Just this is a different get something circumstance. Because you're not allergic to it, yeah. intolerant. Something is better than mm. nothing. Don't worry if it's not your normal diet. You can get back to it as soon as you're fit and healthy. But you need some sort of food fuel in you, whether that's the right stuff or the wrong stuff. You need some sort of food fuel. Yeah. So get something in you yeah. um doesn't you know um see so, yeah so when i wake up as well i had a drip in my arm um i had oxygen up my nose so i just had some tubes they're going around my face then mm -hmm. behind me somewhere um, they're tiny like tiny. it literally sits above your lip like that and then they've got like two things that stick into your nostrils and then it just hooks so it's not all over your face um i know like a nasal cannula is what they're called mm. It sounds a bit daunting, but it's honestly, it's literally above your above your lip in between there. And then it goes like that. Um, you can feel it kind of hooked over you. It's like a tube. So, mm. yeah, it's not as bad as it probably sounds. And it's a lot better than like a big old mask on your face. Yeah. And the next thing as well is I had these two canisters of blood. <clears throat> um, they're attached to me near enough the entire time I was at the hospital, apart from the last day, perhaps. Yeah. Um, so that's above my incision <clears throat> to my, my spine. Above that, I got a little little dot, so it's a little tube, something going up there, mm -hmm. wherever it was, um, on each side. Then outside of that, maybe a one meter long, maybe one and a half, yeah, about one meter long tube, which went into these big canisters of blood, essentially, which was my mm -hmm. my drainage, effectively. Yeah. Um, the point of that is to minimize infection by having less leakage going out into your body, so yeah. it catches it. Then what they will do is every few hours or whatever time period they have is they'll measure how much symptoms they so hold it up and say okay you're jonathan you've got 100 mil here and 80 mil here or whatever mm -hmm. it is they basically leave those in until the amount doesn't go up anymore mm -hmm. so when it sort of staggers you think okay your, your blood systems uh sort itself out now yeah you're more stable we can in, remove them now in my case um i lost a fair bit of blood i think maybe two 300 mil um it's not a massive amount but you know it's still it's an amount yeah um so losing blood is you know losing blood isn't it, it you will you feel, feel quite bit. giddy so 
when you get up, make sure someone is always with you all the time. Yeah, don't get um, up alone. Even if they say, okay, you're fine to get up, just, just have someone with you. I, mm-hmm. I don't care. Um, I had two experiences where I nearly blacked out in the shower room. The yeah. Um, they yeah. they say don't fall cool. That's their little, mm-hmm. um, little phrase, which I think is great. Mm-hmm. Because you don't know how you're going to feel because you're going to be a bit wobbly. You've not really been on your legs. You've just had surgery. It's absolutely fine to ask for help to stand up or just to say, can you just watch me stand up to either a check that you're standing up appropriately. um, So Mm. you don't obviously injure yourself or catch anything. And then if you do feel a little bit wobbly, you've got somebody there. Yeah. Um, That's what they'd prefer, especially for a good few days afterwards while you're getting your bearings. It's a big thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So the first 20 hours approximately. So imagine from, 12 when i had my finished i came out of surgery to mm-hmm. around 12 the next day yeah i was so out of it i could barely text message mm-hmm. uh, i could barely use my hands um, i could just about grab a cup of water and somehow get it down my neck um a little spillage on little the spillage way in the way yeah um i think what else yeah i could only move at that point i could only move my toes my right arm and my head so i could just about use the commode to go to the toilet because like mm-hmm. at that point i couldn't stand up like they, some people can stand up on the first day. For me, it was physically impossible because I had a dead yeah. left arm. Um, I lost a fair bit of blood. My blood pressure was extremely low and mm-hmm. my blood oxygen was also extremely low. Yeah. Um, so I was in no fit state to be standing up no. and walking around. Um, they do say they try and get you up as soon as possible afterwards. They try and encourage you to eat and drink as soon as possible afterwards. That minimizes eat. the sickness feeling because you can feel a bit sick afterwards. Mm. Um, but obviously, if you're not safe to stand, they won't make you. Um. And I think because you're a bloke, obviously, when you use your commode, it's basically like a, a urine bottle. Like a, sh- like a shoe, um, like a shoe sort of thing. And obviously they have cardboard ones, disposal ones in the hospital. Because mm. you guys are easier to be able to do that, you don't need to move any part of your body. You just have to whip it out, put it in the you know tube and then we. Mm. Whereas for women, I think you'd have a catheter because we have to physically lift our pelvis up to be able to Let's get... Go the female version of it under you to be able to wee. Um, so I feel like you didn't have a catheter because mm. men is easier to to wee without moving, whereas obviously women, you would have to. And I've had them, uh, when I had the kids, I had two C-sections with them and they're absolutely fine. A little bit uncomfortable with a tube attached to you, obviously just in case there's any women watching this that are potentially having this surgery. Um, it's, it's just a tube obviously attached inside <clears throat> where you don't even know mm. that you're weeing. Because when I had my first child, I didn't even realise they put it in until they took it out. And I, you just didn't realise. It's uncomfortable if you pull on it um, or catch it. But once you know it's there, you're then a bit more cautious of the um, the tube mm. and then the bag that it's attached to. But yeah, I think I think that's important in case women think that they're going to have to try and toilet afterwards. Because yep. our, our urine ways are different to blokes. We have to physically lift to be able to put it under. So I think they'd, they'd catheterise you. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, so yeah. So throughout the first night, you'll be hounded, mm-hmm. and they'll ask your name a million times, and you have to remember your name a million times. Just check, you know, Just who check you are. Who you are. Um, they'll ask you what your allergies are, mm-hmm. what is. They'll ask some identifying features, just so they can assess. Oh, he's kind of with it. He's kind of not with it. Yeah. You know, they they, they monitor your, your responses to things and say, mm-hmm. okay, he's he's alert now. He's um capable. He's fully back with it, or he's still yeah. got. A bit in his um, system. Yeah, then, so they check you every maybe half hour, the first 12 hours. Mm-hmm. And that will include in the night if you are. So if you're expecting to get a good sleep the first night, don't forget, no. about, don't forget about that. Don't Scrap that. Scrap that. Um, so then then they sort of go from half an hour initially, you know, blood pressure, yeah. take you drink any water. They'll they'll remind you of these things. Oh, as well. yeah. Um, then it might go to every hour. It mm-hmm. becomes a bit more tolerable at that point. Um, then you have a physio at some point. Come over and say, you know, how are you doing, Jonathan? Nice to meet you. Blah blah blah. Um, you're gonna have, you know, my my assistants to help you get up and show you how to move in and out of the bed. Mm-hmm. They give you little things to read. At this point, I I couldn't read anything. Um, I can just about read something now. So yeah, I lost a lot um of my essence, my spiritual eff- essence from that surgery. So I'm still trying to regain some, but um, which is completely normal. Mm. You've you basically been knocked out, um, yeah. with obviously you know safely. So it is normal that you're a little bit, a bit doolally, a bit fuzzy headed and you don't really know what's mm. happening. 
Um, some people, yeah. it takes them a bit longer to come out of it. Some people, they can, you know, be absolutely yeah. fine within like a day. My advice to people is get as much salt into your system as mm-hmm. possible, much water in your system as possible. Yeah. And anything you can get down your neck, which is nutritious. And for me, that was eggs. That was one thing I could get my hands on. Um, yeah. So I did eat eggs as often as I can. So mm-hmm. breakfast. Bald egg, wasn't it? Bald egg. Um, I had a slice of toast. That was more of a delivery system for the butter. Um, and the lunch was a cheese omelette. Mm-hmm. That worked fine. Yeah. Um, I was quite happy with that. I did the same the next day just because I thought, they don't, they don't give you salt and pepper in hospitals over here. <laughs> So no. I'm someone that needs a lot of salt. Bear in mind, I lost a lot of blood, so I need enough salt to sort of replenish myself. Yeah. Um. So to so take your own salt. Take your own salt. That was that's one thing. If I was to go back in time, mm-hmm. we'll see. How was I to know? Yeah. You can ask them. Mm-hmm. Um, but at one point, the you don't think about the that, team though, did you? say that they did say that um if we have to get salt and pepper, we're happy to. But it just means we have to walk all the way over to the other side of the hospital. And I was like, well, I'm not going to ask you now because I feel bad because you're, <laughs> you're doing some. everything else. Yeah. So you're doing everything else. So you know just bring your own bring as much as you can mm-hmm. fit and you make sure someone is there to help you because in the, fir- the first day or two you're not getting up bending over picking up anything no. so I make mean, sure it's all reachable if, for if, you i'm very i'm six foot one or probably close to six foot two now um so <laughs> so make sure everything's <laughs> at a good height whatever it's your mobile phone chargers get yeah. everything set up and say you know i need access to this this is this, this yeah your glasses case whatever you use make sure everything's accessible and they'll mm-hmm. help you just just, just have, have a, write down a list i need after my surgery, I need this, this, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, happily ask them. They honestly, they understand you can't move. Mm. So it isn't an issue for them to pass you things because they know that you can't move to get it yourself. If you could, you would. Yeah. So it isn't too much to ask. I know some people get a bit funny about, but I don't want to ask them to pass me my phone. They just, mm. you know, they're looking after me. But then yeah. if you can't get it and you struggle to get it, you're going to injure yourself trying to get it, which so, isn't worth it. Yeah, so my... Again, back to the point about my markers, my blood oxygen was very low, mm-hmm. um, around 94%. So I knew at that point they should have given me some salt, salty water, some fluid, some eggs. Mm-hmm. I was drinking as much as I could. Um, at yeah. one point in the night, I drank around six cups and the lady thought I was crazy, but I was like, you told me to drink water. Um, <laughs> I need more salt in my system, love. Because mm-hmm. um, I was just diluting myself. So I actually need more salt to get everything else back up to normal. Um, yeah. 94% blood oxygen, so I felt de I was out of it. Um, my blood oxygen does run lower than most people's. Um, mm-hmm. That isn't something I need to look into more. I, I'm i not an expert in that particular aspect of human health. So that's something I need to focus on um, going forward. Um, breathing more, maybe. That's what they told me. Um, <laughs> Breathe more. And blood pressure got as low as 110 over 45. Um, and it stayed around that point until perhaps the day that I left um, mm-hmm. the hospital. Pulse was around 50 to 70, which is good for an athletic person mine yeah. tends to run higher my average tends to run around 80 to 90 um i have suffered with chronic stress um my stress is different to your stress my tolerance seems to be whatever it is mm-hmm. that is subjective um you may walk in there and be quality fine you know your blood pressure will go down because less blood in your system you're not yeah. as active so keep that in mind i i do suggest to people they'll tell you as well when you're having a surgery when you wake up so you keep moving if you can just, mm-hmm. just moving your hands moving your neck just keep everything shuffling your feet around yeah tensing your bum, bum cheeks flexing you know do whatever you can to sort of small movements small movements just to mm. get adjusted and get a, your um proprioceptive kind of feel yeah. for things so get aware of what's around you and mm. touch and get your senses back because you don't want to not move and then you stiffen up um so then when you come to move you're going to be so stiff because you've just kind of laid there, like not moved at all. You still yeah. need to kind of get your body as loose as you can be in the parameters of of your, uh, you know, ability from mm. the start. But like you say, just, you know, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, mm. twist your ankle around if you can. Yeah. Get that blood flow yeah, moving so, around. Yeah, so the first day you'll feel very strange. Mm. Uh, you won't have much awareness. That is quite normal. Um, bear in mind, you, the sedative effect... I mean, they had to put enough to knock out a horse for me, you know? So I, I was out of it for probably a good day and a half, two days. Most yeah. people are fine within 24 hours. Um, it took me a lot longer. Yeah. My detox pathways aren't that great. So that's probably why um, I was, wasn't eating enough either. So no. I tried, but there's only so much you can get down when you've got one arm. Um, can't reach anything. <laughs> um, your face is all numb as well because you had your face planted in something. Mm. Um, Brought in like protein bars as well to mm. kind of, you know, get in as, as much as you could, as easy yeah. as possible. And, and the pain is only really there 
um, when you try to move. Mm -hmm. So think, you know, you switch, switch, you're shifting around to your right side, your left side. Sitting up is very challenging. Um, sitting down with your legs straight and your torso upright. Probably off the cards for most people. Some people might mm -hmm. be able, but even me, um, a bodybuilder, I, I didn't have the strength to do it. I didn't have the the muscular awareness to really no. do it. So um, you know, just do what you can do and maximize mm -hmm. what things you can to achieve. Um, Don't push yourself. It's it's not worth aggravating it for the sake of oh, I want to yeah. get in that position. Yeah, you'll so, get there eventually. Yeah. So the second day I woke up and. I lost sensation in my right leg overnight. Um, I did tell people this and they said, you know, it's quite normal. Say I feel mm -hmm. as the day goes on. My sensation did go, come back a bit. So bear in mind when you're having a spine surgery, your nerves in that area will be affected mm -hmm. in that you'll be inflamed. So it might not be that they've messed up your surgery or anything like that. It might just be that, you know, your tissues are inflamed, they're pinching mm -hmm. on something a little bit, but that swelling will go down. Yeah, which will it. then, it will then ease the numbness and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, the next point is my left arm was still sleepy. Mm -hmm. I gained maybe 20% function back to it. So I could probably open my wrists up about like that. I could no longer do that, but I could get a bit more. Yeah. I could probably move my arm a bit, but I had no tensile strength. Like it's just floppy. Um, so yeah, I had two visitors that day on the, I believe it was Tuesday. Sophie, my mum, that's pleasant. Um, I strongly advise people to have someone, a loved one, a friend, family member to come visit you mm -hmm. if you can. Um, it does lift your spirits up and it gives you something to look forward to. Um, because when you're in hospital, you don't really have much perception of time, but you have something to look forward to. You know, yeah. at some point today, someone is coming to see yeah. you. And I would time. ask the hospital beforehand because every hospital has different, uh, different like visiting rules. So on the first day, of, on the Monday when you went in for surgery, their rule was they don't have any visitors that day of surgery, even though you was out by lunchtime and their visiting hours were two till six. So he was out of then and he was back on in his room by then. Um, but that was, you know, their rules. And again, you might have to book in. Um, so I do advise either ask before or while they're in surgery, give them a ring and kind of, um, you know, ask them double check so you're pre-planned. Yeah. Yeah. So I had two visits that day. Mm -hmm. um, I've bought some proper food, which is very helpful. Um, it does lift your spirits as well, being more familiar with the things that you used to. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you've got a special pillow that you like to use that's more comfortable bring anything to make the experience more comfortable for you yeah. so that might be that you bring a teddy or something stupid yeah and you know bring a certain, certain t-shirt a blanket that mm -hmm. you like something which is comfortable for you anything like that will help um, anything familiar you're in a hospital people don't like hospitals as it is do mm -hmm. they that's right yeah I, mean, I quite enjoyed it <laughs> well, i'm a bit uh sadistic but <laughs> waiting on hand and foot mm -hmm. yeah then managed four meals on the second day so i could eat a bit more mm -hmm. um, it wasn't much food but it's a bit more and as the time went on i managed to get more food yeah. and i did feel better better than nothing still one functioning arm one not ideal the left one still <laughs> didn't work too well um i tried watching tv i had a tv directly in front of me just above eye level mm -hmm. and that was impossible to watch i think i watched 20 minutes of a argentina football match and gave up was it bit countdown the countdown I think it's up. more like background noise, isn't it? So it's not it's dead silent noise. in your room. You, yeah, you have no perception of real perception of time. You know, mm. oh, in about two hours, someone's going to come around or whatever. Yeah. You don't really know what's going on. You're not. The sort of day goes by, you're not all there. You're <laughs> going. Um, then the second day, I managed to get up and actually wash myself. Um, so I went into the my, my en -suite. En suite. Yeah. And um, the lady said, okay, Jonathan, um, now you can get up and you can walk around a little bit with. I'm wearing a, a brace from it doesn't know and um crutches for any sort of longer distances now but mm -hmm. at the time i had to use crutches constantly from that yeah. where i went um getting up was extremely difficult my mm -hmm. right glute particularly my right glute i'm not sure why i think because that's my bad side um wouldn't fire so imagine mm -hmm. lifting your body up with one purely leg. one leg i had to do that over and over again bear in mind the the angles of things are a bit weird because i'm mm -hmm. six foot one well, well, um so there's that aspect of it as well um that was very challenging getting up um you know they, they're careful not to pull you up because yeah they don't want to wreck things but um, they want you to do it they want because to they don't to... want to mm. pull or push against you because it you know twinge yeah. and so that was me with my two crutches um and each one i had the, the canisters i mentioned earlier of the blood mm -hmm. they had a little ringlet on them and i'd attach them to each crutch on the handle yeah i'd get up and i'd walk them with bottles of blood <laughs> Splashing around everywhere, splashing everywhere, in the bottle, in the little bowls. Um, walked over to the thing. Um, mm -hmm. Tried to sit on the seat, but I couldn't. Couldn't get down to too the angle, low. Too low. It? I had to get a boost seat for the toilet. 
Um, and I've washed myself, turned the, the shower on, fine. Mm-hmm. Wash my face, could kind of do things with one hand a little bit. Couldn't really use any gel, but I said to the lady, I don't use no. body wash or anything. Um, it's all toxic anyway, even the natural stuff. My body gets wrecked from it. It yeah. does damage my skin directly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I avoid using anything nowadays, just water. Yeah. Um, then what happened? Then, yeah, she meant, oh, sorry, I meant, meant a body wash. I was like, what, what do you mean? Like a flannel or something? It's like, yeah, like just in the sink. I was like, you told me to sit on the shower thing over here. Bear around the shower seat. It was like under the shower. So I thought she meant, Shower. shower. She no, she meant use the, the thing and and just, just yeah. wash because you can't get your dressing. You're wet. not with it. So I suggest anytime you can get someone to come in and help you. Yeah. Um I'm pretty shameless. I don't care if someone comes in and sees me naked. Do, I don't care. But you know, they try to respect your dignity. Yeah. So they want you to feel comfortable doing your own thing. And they say, I'm just in the room next to you, change your sheet. So just they'll turn the away if yeah. You know, they'll get you in the position and they'll turn away or they'll hold like a towel up so they can't see. They're quite good at preserving your dignity. But mm. when you're in that scenario, you just don't care. Mm. You're you not care. bothered. You just want someone to help you out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I managed to get up and actually climbed a small flight of stairs, about five steps yeah. up and down. That was on the first day. Um, I also walked up and down the, the corridor twice. So my physio was with me and they thought, you know, you're doing well, Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, very much, I'm a very heavy person, so lifting my weight is tricky. Um, so yeah, it was quite quite challenging. Um, that's it's actually out in itself, isn't it? It's exhausting. Mm. Prepared to be very exhausted. very tired. Um, yeah. Not not just like oh, I'm a bit tired now. I've had a little walk. No, no, no. You, as if you've done right. a full on workout. Imagine you've done a full leg day. Mm. That's what it feels like when you get get back from where, where yeah. you've done. Um, Which again is normal. It's normal. your body's processing everything. You're low in happened. oxygen. You're low in blood. Yeah, Your blood pressure's rubbish. You've got no sort of go. You're somewhat sedated still. You're probably mm-hmm. on morphine. Yeah. Um, it you will feel sluggish. Yeah. You will feel like death. But the more you get up and move mm-hmm. within your active range, the safest way you can do it, yeah. the better. Definitely. Um, Sophie caught all of that on camera's proof. Go back to the <laughs> previous video on surgery um, just to see what's going on. Um, yeah. So anyway, that day then then took the drainage pipes out my back. Mm-hmm. That was the most excruciating pain of my life. Um, I have to be honest in your videos. I want to encourage people to do make the right choices. Mm-hmm. So more information Prepare on how you have. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the, the left one was actually more painful on this side. And the right one was less painful. But the left one, I, I swore and I was like, oh my God, that hurt. Mm-hmm. That really hurt. Mm-hmm. Like I, I swore. Like, and I, was, I don't think anyone heard, but, but apart from the people behind me, so <laughs> I'm thinking, this guy's going to rip my head off in a minute. Um, but yeah, then they did the right one. Then the right one, I just ended up laughing because the pain was so high. I've never experienced that before mm. in my life that I think I just found it funny because I wasn't sure how to react because when you experience such a intense pain, and a you, new you go into kind. shock. Yeah. Not, it's new to you. So you don't think, oh, scream and shout. You just think, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> when you that stub your toe, you've done that. All the, do you know what I mean? We stub mm. our toe all the time. But when you've never had something like that and then you experience that kind of pain for the job that they're doing, it is different. So you... You just don't know how to react. And it's, mm. they have seen it all. They don't care if you shout, scream, you know, grit your teeth. They've seen it all. Just mm. don't hit them. No violence towards them. Yeah. So after that, that night, they then removed the compression ankle bands. Mm-hmm. Um, annoyingly, they actually left them at the edge of my bed, still pumping away at night. <laughs> I can't remember. But my mum came over later in the day after Sophie visited and mm-hmm. um, she Moved said, him. Do you, do you guys need these on? Because he's just going on. And it's annoying my son. Um, I I'm too um, sensitive to sens- the noise. Aren't sensitive you? to the noise, yeah. and I I'm very tolerant of things. I rather just leave things and cause stress for people. Um, one of the nurses actually went and said to my mum, "Jonathan's so easy to deal with. I've never <laughs> never had such a patient that's so um, chilled, chilled, and just doesn't doesn't stress it, doesn't ring the buzzer all the time. Mm. I just don't care. I just, at that point, I was like, oh, these people are working hard to sort of." Um, keep everyone in shape yeah. and i'm one of the fitter probably people there younger people there probably more tolerant so i could go to the toilet by myself i could do mm-hmm. the essential things i needed to so that's fine they um, don't mind you ringing the buzzer if you yeah. need help you need help ring the buzzer um but don't take them in they do they do work extremely hard bless them mm. yeah so when i had those tubes removed from my back the blood bottles drainage yeah drainage things i did feel a lot more human um for anyone that's seen the matrix when he's in this like casket thing and he's just having this tube pulled out of him and stuff and he's in this bottle of water gel stuff and he comes out and he's all that's how I felt. I felt like I was reborn. I had that freedom. A new man. I felt like Neo in the Matrix. Yeah. Um 
yeah, Cynic's down a decent size breakfast. At that point, the catering staff realized, okay, we're dealing with a six foot one um, top amateur bodybuilder here. So mm. we're going to have to give him some decent proteins. A bit and more food. A bit more food. Um, so I wolfed down that food. They're quite shocked. Mm. Um, but I needed it because I was so far behind in my, my usual eating. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, then that day they sort of said, you know, you can do all the things you need to do. It's quite capable. They then start discharged me. Mm-hmm. Um, so what that means is they then say, okay, you need to sign this, this, and this, and this. Are you happy to go home? You know, do you have someone to look after you at home? Mm-hmm. Who's going to take you? All these sort of things to make sure you can go from A to B safely. Yeah. Um, my family weren't sure on it, on, on it yet at that, that point because they were worried about them shoving me off early sort of thing because when you're in hospital, mm-hmm. You know what it's like at the moment um, with hospitals being very busy. So yeah. they didn't want me in there for a moment longer than I had to be, understandably. But um, they reassured me and they said, you know, mm-hmm. you can do this, this, this in yourself. Yeah. The, the head nurse, the physio, the Consultant, surgeon, yeah. surgeon sort of, everyone said, you know, you're good to go. You're happy, clinically fit, clinically you're physically fit. fit. So if anything did happen to me on my way out of the hospital, that would have been their responsibility. Yeah. Um, I did tolerate getting home fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so then at that point, I was, had the my um stepdad drove drove us back um I had the seat at a, a, a low incline so I was almost lying, lying down. down basically i suggest having seat as back as far as you can i'm very mm-hmm. tall so i need the more space but when you're sat down in the chair sorry um imagine that's my feet make almost make it like you're standing up whilst you're lying down in the in the, yeah. the car then the pressures you got like a buffer Rather than just feeling every bump, mm-hmm. you then got that. So you can use your legs a bit to sort of cushion each bump. Yeah. So they've got this giant bump like that big outside the hospital out. on the way out. And then you feel all the potholes and the rubbish hole, roads. Everything. I mean, obviously, we don't know where, where you are in the world, but the UK, the roads are absolute crap. The wor- they are the worst. The and it's world, not until you have an country. injury yeah. that you then feel every single tiny little pothole and the unevenness of the road, no matter how slow you're going. I think I was going like 10 miles an hour the other yeah. day, and you were like, oh, and I was like, oh, I can't go any slower. I literally can't go any slower. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was given um braces, sorry, a waist brace, like a mm-hmm. corset thing, which I wear. I have to wear whenever I am moving. Mobile. Yeah. The only time I'm not wearing it is when I'm lying down at night. Mm-hmm. Um they Get said to me, Yeah, you have they said to me you have to wear that like for six mm. weeks. Yeah. Um, because of my weight, my height, the instability is more likely to be a problem because I'm more mobile than most people. Um, mm. I am gonna need to have a brace because to to provide a bit of like a proprioception so mm-hmm. i've got a feeling of how much i can move and it keeps me still as well in a, in a midsection which is perfect keeps you in the right position doesn't it so mm-hmm. you're not kind of at an awkward angle like your back your lower back isn't at like a, a twist or anything yeah so i then had a um a booster seat for the toilet they think i did they they thought i didn't need it i was like i'm six foot one yeah the hospital toilets which are meant to be accessible were right on the floor like mm. Very well, I couldn't get to that. I had no chance, even with the rails. I, I getting myself up. Bear in mind, I couldn't feel my my bum muscles. Yeah, I had no chance of getting up. So I had to get um on the way back. We were stopped by a British Heart Foundation or something, or British Army. Yeah, charity, charity shop, shop isn't it? something. Um, they had a whole stock room full of disability accessibility equipment, which is perfect for me. Yeah, uh, so I got a toilet booster seat. Mm-hmm. Um, frame. commode, a frame, mm-hmm. a seat. Um, did I say commode? You said commode, yeah. Like a riser thing as well. Yeah. Um, and a urine bottle, so, obviously, for blokes. Yeah, perfect. Mm. So that's fine. Definitely um, recommend getting that stuff. Even the toilet seat without the booster, I'm five foot four and I would have struggled to get down. Mm. And obviously, there's a massive height difference between us and I would have still struggled. That's how low it was. Yeah, so that night I got back fine. Mm-hmm. Um, the journey was around 40 to 45 minutes. And we did stop around 20 minutes in. I think, especially the first week, you do take brief intermittent stops throughout mm-hmm. your journeys if you're not going to do any. Um, make Do as much movement as you can. It sounds a bit like, yeah, but don't do a lot. I'm yeah. saying just do a bit of movement. I'm saying get up every 45 minutes to an hour yeah. throughout the day. Walk across the hallway. Lap the house. Lap the house. Yeah. Just do, just do something. Um, my first day, I actually walked up the road is only about 50 meters and walk back mm-hmm. just do anything the, the more you move the more that your body will realize yeah. okay i need to use these muscles yeah i need to keep my lower back and core strong um it will stimulate your blood flow which will then in turn stimulate your recovery yeah. and it'll improve everything so you'll recover quickly um, and you won't stiffen up people are gonna watch and think no don't do that you've had no honestly the, the recommendations from all the experts yeah. is to get up as much as possible in your as capability as you can, within your capabilities yeah. safely 
Um, if you have to have handrails throughout the house, if you have to just navigate the house by, you know, using the kitchen surf- yeah. surfaces, the oh, little ladies holding on to everything as they go around the house. Or you can just just move or walk um, around with the crutches. If you don't have anything to be able to grab onto periodically, then walk around with the crutches. Mm. You've got then civility. It's then reassuring for yourself that you're not gonna wobble and topple because obviously that's the last thing you want to do. Yeah. So that night I was home fine. Mm-hmm. I was in a lot of pain, but the pain was different. So I'm used to being sat upright and as time goes on, punch further and further forward. Mm-hmm. My lower back tightens, tightens, tightens. That is the, the thing that really ruined my life. Um, it caused me a lot of mental health problems, distress, physical distress, mm-hmm. pain, suffering, tearful journeys around, you know, in the car. Yeah. Um, going to bed at night, crying, feeling desperation, feeling sore wishing that a better day would come um mm. my mental health has been in previous years horrendous yeah uh, i can't think i don't think i can express that clear enough um i was in a terrible state i did have this is like an add-on bits this video i know it's a very long video but this all relevant it all yeah. does fit together and the more information can put out in this video someone will be able to watch and think this is what i'm going to go through from surgery from point a to point b yeah um so yeah and what i did for three months Prior to surgery, roughly three to four months, was I had taken a counselling CBT thing. Yeah. Um, cognitive behavioural therapy. So I spoke to a therapist and that was free of charge from people in my country, which was like a, a scheme to improve mental health amongst young adults, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, that was excellent. Yeah. I learned a lot of different methods and I knew after I had the surgery that my mental health would maybe not diminish, but I would have issues. I'd be thinking, oh, I'm not going to be able to get that rush from the gym anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I love to lift heavy weights. I love to lift well. I love to be strong. You know, uh, it's not like a vanity thing. Like um, I must look the best. I must look the best. Yeah. It's more like, I want to see how hard I can work and mm. how much I can outdo myself from the time before. Because, you know, it is. You push yourself. You push yourself and you've got to have that goal. Um, yeah. Coming from someone that hasn't been able to reach their possible capacity in terms of income because of my disabilities yeah i will say they are disabilities i am or have been and unable to do a lot of things i want to do mm-hmm. um it has definitely helped me in terms of mental health the training so that's where i stand on that point um getting back to the point about surgery at least um ramble ramble <laughs> um yeah so i'd say by that point around maybe the day after i got home so that'd be day four day five roughly mm-hmm. i felt 50 percent better than the day of my surgery in terms of energy, ability, mobility, mm-hmm. what I could do. Um, I've got a few videos back in time. So if you look at those, you can see what I've been able to do up to this point. Right now, I'm, I'm standing roughly, I'd say, what, 10, 11 days after surgery, maybe 12 days. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm able to sit here for a long period of time without much, too much trouble. Um, I'm holding onto the desk in front. That's my hands here. It's probably wobbling a bit. Let's <laughs> see. But, um, that's why. Um, I want to make a disclaimer here. So my results in terms of surgery and what I've been able to achieve before, after, you know, they're not typical. Um, I am a bit of an anomaly when it comes to recovery from trauma. Um, many years ago, perhaps when I was a young teen, um, I strained my right quadricep in an army camp training thing. And I still managed to run a three mile race. I didn't win that race had a strain quad but i finished it and completed it mm, running excellent um for anyone that knows that people like me and my brother we are a bit uh a bit tough we don't we're not macho in that sort of sense you know we're a bit tough like we, we like the challenge of it mm, don't give in easily we don't give in we yeah. have we have no no giving in mm. we 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 don't experience that we we want to be everyone at everything mm. um, that's our competitive nature but that also applies to ourselves. so it means yeah way our mentality is set is that we have to be ourselves so every day even if it's that i get 0.0001 percent better i'll take that that's, yeah that's one one bit better than the day before um and a lot of what i talk about and try to preach to people is the power of a strong will and positive mind um if you look back at the last video i got my surgery you'll you'll hear that i had a no fear no mm-hmm. worries when you've been in pain for such a long time and i've known about my diagnosis now for this point one year two weeks roughly Mm -hmm. i knew i was gonna need surgery i had every 
mental capacity in place and every understanding that I would need it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was mentally prepared going into it. I did the CBT prior to it. Yeah. Um, I couldn't be in a better mental position in order to do it. I knew what would happen. I knew what would happen before, during, after. So videos like this prepared. should be helpful. Yeah. Um, hours of therapy and mental preparation going into this. Um, Researching. I had to everything. understand everything about the surgery. So I was reading research articles about the surgery, about the approach, the the methodology of it, the statistics, the data surrounding the mm-hmm. efficacy of it. I knew every inside out of it. Um, so I was you were different ready. advice. I was ready to do yeah. it. I was ready to go. And I think that's why you had no fear. You had no anxiety. Like the day of the surgery, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> Not going to lie, I was a nervous wreck. Mm. He was absolutely fine. But I think because... He's had 14 years of pain, knowing that this is the only solution. Like, I know he had a lot of people giving him advice and help, and it is appreciative, mm. uh, appreciated, but this was his only option. If if he didn't need it, he wouldn't have had it. He's mm. he's young. He wouldn't have had a major surgery if he didn't need it. So I think because of all that, you had no fear because you were mentally prepared. And like mm. you say, mine is a very powerful thing. Like, you need to be positive. Otherwise, if you are negative, you will bring yourself down and then you won't recover better as best as you could because you're you're mentally not with it. Mm. Yeah, so bear in mind, I mean, I look a bit older than this perhaps to some people. I'm 27 and a half years old. I always add the half because it makes me sound young. <laughs> um, what I'm hoping to do with these sort of videos, this mini series on spine surgery is mm-hmm. inspire young people that might have to go through the surgery um there is light to the end of the tunnel Mm. um one quote which i might mention is fail to fail to prepare prepare to fail yeah um don't ever let failure be an option the only guarantee of failure is if you quit Mm -hmm. you've got to make this a do or die mentality um you have to approach it with every intention every thought that this will be successful Mm -hmm. you will get the benefits from it you have to apply yourself towards the recovery methodologies that are appropriate appropriate to you and think carefully about what your long-term goal is. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm I'm thinking if I can spend the next 50 years in, you know, not having the pain that I did have before, yeah, I'm going to take that. If that means that it will take me two, ten, five, five years, whatever, to achieve to what I used to that. achieve um, in the gym, I'll take it. The it's pain I experienced was phenomenal. Mm. Um, I would not wish it on anyone. And as someone that isn't very expressive with the autism, that sort of thing, you know, I I can say, um, yeah, it is it is beyond anything that mm. many people experience in their life. So when people tell me about their pain, I can com- completely appreciate and empathize exactly what they're saying. Yeah, I know I know what this pain is like. Um, you live with it. Mm. Many people are in pain. Many many people. Many of my clients are in pain. So I can feel what they're feeling. Um, yeah. But you know, I'm hoping to come out this at the other side of this in a much better position. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, take the time that you need to progress for each stage of the process. Don't just do it for yourself, but do it for your loved ones. I think mm. my mum used to be very upset when um, we'd go out shopping and say she wants to look around the clothes shop for an hour. I'd be able to do it I mean, 10, 20 minutes after that. I was hunched over, having to sit on the floor, you know, in the middle of a shop, sat on the floor, lying down on the floor in some cases, mm-hmm. just to tolerate it. My back would not deal with it. Um, at this point, I was extremely strong. My lower mm. back was as strong as I could physically make it at yeah. that point. And um, it wasn't a strength thing. It was a, my spine needs to be readjusted, re, rejigged sort yeah. of thing. Um, so yeah, don't just do this for yourself. Um, other, other people want to see you happy and pain-free. Yeah, I yeah. hated seeing him in pain. And That flare-up before um, we went to the Arnold Classic this year. was I honestly thought we were going to cancel it. And it's mm. because... I don't like him to feel that he's pressured into doing things. So obviously, because we've got two little ones, a five and an eight month old, we've had to cancel play dates or leave them early or cancel a day out or I plan a day so I know that we're not out all day because of his back. I mean, it's no issue to me. Do you know what I mean? I don't want him in pain for the sake of going out because the kids are happy. As long as we're together, the kids are happy. They don't care. We don't have mm. to go out and spend a day in a theme park or anything if he's going to be in pain for it it's not worth it Mm. um and I think I'm accommodating of that and I'm understanding of that and I wouldn't put him in a position where he feels like he has to grin and bear it just for the sake of a day out um 
And I think I've expressed that to you quite a lot of, mm. if you don't want to, it's absolutely fine. Don't feel you have to. Mm. Um, and I think you guys have to remember that if you are in pain, don't feel like you have to do something. If you tell someone, I can't do that, I can't be out all day, it's too much, they should understand. Maybe not understand fully if they don't have any pain, but they should respect your choice and kind of tweet things for you. Mm. Because I know if this was the other way around, he would do the same. He wouldn't expect me to be out all day um, in absolute agony because then he's then bed bound for like the next day. For the sake of a day out with the kids, he's then bed bound the next day. So it, it's not worth it. Mm. Yeah, it's not something you can grit your teeth over mm. and think, oh, I'm going to get over this and just, just bear it. I'll pop a few pills, it'll be all right. The problem with the pills as well, I'll touch this briefly before we finish this video, but the pills, they work to a point, then they stop working. Mm -hmm. Then you need more pills. Then you need to change the pills. They need to add more pills onto the pills. They need pills to counteract the side effects of the pills. It's you just all these pills, you end up rattling. Um, it does. <laughs> I, I have invested a lot of time and money into researching the best practices in order to reduce my, the pain I am in. Mm -hmm. um, there is no one out there that knows my body better than I do. And that's the same for everyone out there that's watching this video. Yeah. Um, people with chronic back pain, people with knee pain, people with arthritic pain, joints, hands, rheumatism. You know, um, you know yourself better than anyone else does. So yeah. make sure whatever your decision you use and apply to yourself, make sure it's right for you. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just think. Don't do it for other people. Don't do it for don't other people. Don't try and accommodate other people because they are not the ones living in your pain. You know yourself. Better. You have to be selfish in that sense. Like, mm -hmm. like John said, you know yourself the best. You have to be selfish and it isn't selfish. And if people try and make you feel that it's selfish, then they're being selfish to make you think you have to grin and bear it for the day because you're going to let people down. I don't mm. care. Yeah. Tough. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty much the best advice we can mm. give, the best insight that I can give. Um, if you have any sort of nuanced questions, which are, is a, yeah, but but what happened mm -hmm. to it, you know, any sort of peculiar questions you have, anything weird or, you know, anything you think I wouldn't want to ask at, just put ask in the comments me. below, ask away. Yeah. Um, I am very accessible. There's no reason why anyone that watches this video cannot ex access me. My mm -hmm. links are below. Um, there's a comment section below. My mm -hmm. email is on my website. I have WhatsApp. I have all these methodologies to, yeah. to get a question. You're across. definitely contactable. I'm contactable. And if you have any questions from like the partner's perspective of what to expect. And care. Yeah. Um, you know, and care for. And it's how should I be as the partner? You know, am I allowed to be kind of nervous? Anything like that? I'll put them in the comments. You know, and if I'll I'll answer them. Do you know what I mean? From a different perspective, because I think it's all good from the person having the surgery, but there's also other people to think about as well. Of mm. well, what can I do to help? Is there anything I can do as the partner, as the support system to help? You know, when they get home, is there anything that we can do Perfect. to put in place? Yeah. So don't please, be afraid to ask. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Share it out if you can. There are a lot mm -hmm. of people out there in pain and this video will be informative to them. Yeah. Um, I am here. I am approachable. Do ask us the questions. Yeah, we will be back with you when we can. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Bye.